Hey guys, today we're going to talk about how to practice making lines on silicone. You will also need some kind of pen to make marks. I know that the silicone likes Sharpie better. Just a note on that, if you are using Sharpie or a surgical marker, you definitely want to use only one per client, so you'll have to buy uh, a bunch of either red Sharpies or surgical skin markers, depending on which one you find you like better. On the silicone, it's really only gonna take the Sharpie most likely. You also may want to pick up some rubbing alcohol so that you can clean your silicone. This just gets rid of any dust or residue and sometimes there's a little oily oiliness to the surface on some of these. This one seems pretty good. Now that we got that all cleaned up with the rubbing alcohol, let's just draw some lines with the Sharpie. Okay, so you have four triangles here, and now let's put some rectangles. These ones would be a little easier. circles. Okay, we have all these awesome shapes made now. Let's see how the CNC we practices lining them. Okay, we got the police cartridge in. So I'm just changing my needle depth to about half a grain of rice. Kind of getting in, it's pretty light. Let's see, maybe A little harder to get the black tones it looks like on this type of silicone just for kicks let's turn it up to the highest and just see if we can make it black. Ooh, that is high a little bit too high I think not gonna want to do that on human skin and it doesn't get much blacker so I think it's just the nature of this uh, silicone surface you might notice it's not getting as dark as the real skin and that's okay we're just practicing some lining here beginners can always use practice in this regard so this is always a good exercise for anybody you're gonna want to match your voltage to your hand speed and that's just going to take a little practice on a new surface. When you're joining two lines, you want to go a little bit into the line before and whip out. We 
just seeing how many passes I need to make it black on the silicone. Quite a few there. Definitely hard to get that nice solid black line on this particular skin um, surface. So I think human skin in comparison to this uh, particular product is gonna, you're gonna be able to get a single pass line in which should make your lines look a little, a little better and there'll be less resistance. So this is always good practice. For human skin, human skin should be a little easier to go through. So that's a higher voltage kind of line there. Another way I do lining, kind of dropping the lower voltages. So at lower voltages with the liner, it seems like there's more leeway in the skin. Uh, the needle is not bouncing hard against the surface. So one can sort of brush the line in. Sometimes I think the lines look straighter with this method for me personally. It's not for everybody. I've seen professional artists do this both ways. And again, on human skin, I do feel like this does get darker and blacker more easily with this method than this particular silicone. I'm trying to see how many passes it's gonna take to, uh, with this method to get it at least as dark as the one next to it. The three round liner is definitely harder to pull through this uh, material. This material seems Stiffer. I'm gonna try it again here. Nice single pass line. Right now I'm at this brighter green voltage here. Another higher voltage line here. This is the three round liner in the 12 gauge. So it's a great way to practice lining, get better at lining. Geometry is definitely one of the hardest uh, forms of tattooing, straight lines, perfect circles, Perfect shapes are definitely difficult and take a lot of practice. So with these lower voltages, the needle strikes aren't happening as often, so you can kind of uh, paint in the line uh, slowly. This will not do extra damage to the skin as long as you don't do too many passes and you see the ink getting in. It will get in better than it's getting on the silicone for sure. Okay, let's see. Did I get a little better by the end here? I think so. I'm definitely happiest with this triangle here. 
So yeah, so different methods for lining is definitely personal preference. I think I like to use a smaller liner and then build up the line. So if you need to, you can kind of fix your edges a little bit. So there's issue with time constraint. You know, if you're, you want to work however's comfortable for you, but you have to remember if you're working on a large line project, You'll want to get better at those single pass lines because uh, the blending method can take a little time, building up on the line can take time, getting used to larger needle groupings, uh, passing lines with larger needle groupings on the silicone will be beneficial. I'll try to have another video for that in the future to show the difference between getting a three round liner in and a larger gauge needle. But a three round liner is a great way to start small and kind of build up on your line to try to keep it nice and even. As a beginner, I know it makes me feel a lot more comfortable to do that method. You drop to a lower voltage. Not all the way to the bottom voltage. A little higher because you're gonna be moving your hand like this. I've done this on human skin, it doesn't cause any problem as long as your voltage and your hand speed match up well. You don't want to be too low in voltage, the needle can kind of grab the skin and that can cause problems. Always want to keep a good stretch. Can't do that on the silicone, so that's something you just have to get used to when you start on human skin. So again, if you have a lot of large, thick lines, there's many ways you can build up on lines. You can start with the three round liner and do the outline, fill it in with mag, fill it in with round shader. If your line thickness is supposed to be very thick, I would recommend considering using a larger gauge needle to get that initial uh, line down. That way you don't have to do too many passes on the client. So with this uh, slower blending technique, you're going to probably utilize that more on black and gray projects rather than traditional projects. So it's just a different style. Projects where you can see the lines where they stand on their own. It's much more important to use those higher voltages and the right line weights, but this method here, the blending, copying your stencil down with the three round liner. I'll show you how to utilize this blending technique. So if I were to be tracing a box on my stencil before doing my black work and gray shading, this would be a, a great method because I feel like I can uh, draw a line straighter. Let's challenge ourselves and try more traditional style, even though we're probably going to use a larger gauge needle. Let's see if I got one here. Let's see what that looks like when we try a nine. See how that nine round liners getting in there. Looks much better. So it seems like I can get more solid lines on this silicone using a larger uh, needle collection. This is a nine round liner and a 0.3 uh, or 10 gauge. It looks like it's getting in better. And it's easier to do. So it'll be easier to do a single pass with this.
So this is a wonderful test you can do at home, a little practice for yourself. Uh, this is something I'm still working on, uh, still perfecting, experimenting with different with different needle groupings. Um, I'm showing you this method so that you can learn how to do this uh, and set this up for yourself and experiment with the different line weights and how uh, the different voltages feel for your hand um, on the surface of the silicone. Just bear in mind, skin um, is a little easier uh, to get the ink in, I think, than, uh, than the real skin, as long as you match the voltage to your hand speed and things like that. So this is my method on how to improve your lining, uh, and I'm showing you different patterns to follow along with at home on the silicone from Amazon. Smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. You can find a link for the skin and everything you need to do this yourself at home in the link in the description below. We're gonna go on to the circles now. Let's start with that harder method of just pulling that line and see how hard it is to make a circle on silicone. So when you join the edges, you just wanna go through the line. You've done. And make sure your hand can do the whole pass. See here, feathering in from the side. Coming around. Slowly, patiently joining into the other side there. Definitely not the worst circle ever. Not perfect. But we are using a thicker pen, so I have to kind of decide which part of this uh, tracing am I really going to follow the line with, especially for a circle. So let's follow along the inside here and see if I can do a little better. Let's try a lower frequency here. Let's see if we can't do that sounding method.
using my blending method for lining, which again is different than the higher voltage lining I showed you with the single pass versus the lower voltage with the blending. It does seem better for curves and circles. It'll probably take a while to build it up though and get it dark enough to where you want it. But it feels like I can do it a little bit more safely. It seems like I can follow the guide better with this slower method but it's, it's very light. So right now I'll just have like a light gray line and then I would go in and start filling that in, making it darker. Honestly, with circles, there's, they need to be so perfect. So I would rather take my time and use the, the lower voltages and just move slow. So you'll have to decide which lining method is best for you. And that's really mostly based on what style of tattoo you wanna do. If you're trying to do traditional, you're gonna wanna get better at those larger needle groupings and those single pass lines to really make a nice, you know, even line. A lot of these are kind of looking wonky in the areas where I did that method more than the method I've been kind of used to so far using these lower voltages. And you can see that there too, a little, a little more even. So yeah, I just uh, showing you different methods of doing this. I mean, look at that circle compared to that circle and that circle. So I definitely like this method a bit more. So circles, squares, triangles, geometry in general are gonna take a lot of getting used to. So um, this is a great little exercise for you at home. I hope I've helped you out a little bit today. I'm figuring things out along the way too, so if you have any comments or help for me, you can put it down below. Get all the things you see in the bottom, in the link in the description, so you can follow along at home with Floaty Lady. Thank you, bye. Thank you, bye.